Such a big, wonderful God, and how wonderful, and how lovely is your name. <laughs> and you captivate us, and you save us by your grace. Oh, how wonderful. How lovely 
Yes, Jesus, Lord, you really are wonderful. Lord, you really are full of wonder. Lord, you're full of wonder, Jesus. In Exodus 3, the Lord is telling Moses that he's going to free the Israelites. And he says, you're going to go to Pharaoh and you're going to ask to let your people go. And his heart is going to be hardened and he won't let you go. And then he says this and he says, but I will strike Egypt with wonders. And then he will let you go. Why was it that on the backside of a hardened heart, he said, I'll strike with wonder. And Lord, today as we're declaring that you're wonderful, that you're full of wonder, Lord. Lord, we just ask you to strike us with wonder again. Lord, let us wonder again. Let us be full of wonder, Jesus, at who you are. Let us never lose our wonder at how big you are, Jesus. At how great you are, at how grand you are. Lord, like the day you told Job, were you there when I hung Orion's belt? Were you there when I created the doe and the deer? Were you there when I created the the roar of the lion or when I assigned to the sea its limits? Were you there? I'm a lot bigger than you think. And Lord, we declare today that you are really big. You're really big, Jesus. You're really big, Lord. Lord, would you expose any boxes we've put you in, Lord, and strike them with wonder to see how big of a God you are, Jesus. Oh, how big your love is, how big your grace is, how big your mercy is, how big your salvation is, Jesus. Oh, strike us with wonder to say he's really big. Oh, he's really big. There's nothing my God cannot do. You're really big. Oh, in the day and age, Lord, where we say culture is big and politics are big and wars are big. No, my God is big. My God is big. Oh, Lord, it's easy to give thanks when we put you in your rightful place and say you're really big. You are really big. Oh, you're far bigger than we know. You're far bigger than we've seen. Oh, expand, Lord, the capacity of our spirits to declare he's really big. Oh, Jesus is really big. His hands are really big. Oh, those wounds in his hands are really big. That cross he carried is really big. Oh, his salvation is really big. You're really big, God. Just declare, Holy Spirit, would you strike us with wonder to go, oh, I has not seen nor ear heard how big you are, Jesus. How big you are. Lord, all that you desire to do on the earth, all that you desire to do in the nations, all that you desire to do in the churches, you're really big, God. You're really big, God. You're really big, Jesus. Oh, you're really big.
holes Get lost again and wander Oh, come and behold Oh, he is so captivating Come and behold Oh, come and behold Come and behold Isn't he fascinating? Come and behold Get lost in his majesty Come and behold Isn't he captivating? Come and behold Oh, it's easy to give things to great big God It's easy to give thanks to a great big God. It's easy to give thanks to a great big God. It's so easy. Elijah called down fire. It was by faith that David stood before Goliath. It was by faith that Daniel was in the lion's den. Oh, it was by faith that the Lord carried the cross up the hill. Like it's all by faith. And I just feel today like there's an invitation in the room to have faith for really big things, not to throw up Hail Mary prayers, but to have faith from Jesus to believe for the impossible for really big things, to believe him, to be the name that is above every other name, to see him as he really is, to see him rightly as really big. Oh, as really big. Oh, in this day and hour, the church needs to see the Lord as really big. Oh, it's why you can, it's why we can contend for generations like Gen Z, only because God is really big. It's why we can contend for marriages to be restored only because he's really big. It's why we can believe for prodigals to come home only because he's really big. For the dead to raise, for the sick to be healed, because he's really big. And I feel like the Lord wants to speak to every fear where we've made something else big, where we've made an issue really big, a problem really big, but to have faith to see God, to see Jesus big as king of the universe as the as the king who's seated on the throne the name above every other name as our god who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ever think or imagine it's who he is on the earth today oh so jesus lord if it was accounted to abraham as righteousness because he believed then today lord we believe you're really big Lord, that you can do it. Lord, if you're speaking it, you can do it. If you've said it, you can do it. Lord, for worship leaders, for pastors, for church leaders on the earth, Lord, for us to step into a place where we believe you're really big, God. You really do redeem cities. You really do redeem nations and political parties. It's who you are, Jesus. By faith, believing only you, Jesus, can end abortion in America. Lord, we believe you're really big. I really want to step in that place today where we look at him and we go, be bigger to me, Jesus, than I've ever seen you before. Oh, Jesus, I want to see you as grand and big. I want to be fascinated by the strength and might of who you are, by your power by your arm that's not too short to save. Oh, do it in the earth, Jesus, but do it in our hearts first. 
step into the place of intercession and just ask the Lord to do it. Uh, I specifically feel uh, in the room and even maybe people watching online uh, for infertility that uh, the Lord is going to, um, he's not an infertile God. He, he has the ability uh, to open the womb and I, I just believe it is his desire and for any couples uh, struggling with infertility um, in the name of Jesus Lord we've seen you do it uh, time and time again Lord uh, we've seen testimony after testimony and uh, Father I pray that you you Lord the God of life Lord would give life that Lord uh, these wombs would be fertile in the name of Jesus and just that your winds would blow, that a new season is here, that a new season is here, Lord, that you're breaking off barrenness. And Father, we just declare fertile ground, fertile ground, fertile ground, fertile ground in the name of Jesus, Lord. We just declare that you're the God of life. You're a Father, Lord. you give us good gifts and so we just declare fresh faith renewed hope in your ability to do what only you can Lord that this is your story and so we just declare that you're the God of life you're the God of family and you're the God of fertility over anyone in this room anyone online uh, that is in process declare this is the hour of promise in the name of Jesus. tapping into this vein of uh, the wonder of God, the, the bigness of God, God's ability to do whatever, however, whenever. I mean, if you need a miracle, would you just raise your hand? If like, you're like, man, I, I need to be reminded of how big he is. Would you just raise your hand? If you need a miracle, just raise it high. And so, um, I just want to position you for it. Uh, the Bible says, for although they knew God, they did not honor God or give Him thanks. And I just see us thanking Him. 
thanking him for his ability to do what only he can. So Lord, we are those that know you. And Lord, we want to honor you by thanking you in advance that you are more than able, Lord. You are more than able. You are more than capable. And so I give you thanks, Jesus, before the breakthrough, before the promise, Lord, we give you thanks knowing who you are, knowing who you are, that you're for us, that you're with us. And we shout grace, grace to these mountains. We declare it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your spirit, oh God. And we in faith give you thanks, Lord. We come before you with thanksgiving, Jesus, knowing that you're able, knowing that you're capable. You're the God of life in the midst of death. You're the God of light in the midst of darkness. Lord, we look above the hills, above the mountains from where our help comes from. You tread upon the mountains, Lord. You lift up the valleys, Lord. And in the name of Jesus, Lord, release faith that is unto hope, that renews our minds, to not look at the problem, but Lord Jesus, to look to you who is bigger and better. So we give you thanks, Jesus. It's the good fight of faith. It's the good fight of faith. And so Lord, we give you thanks offering of faith. There's proof. 
provision in the eating, there's provision at the table. You're growing us spiritually. You are maturing us, God. Oh, on Tuesday afternoon at 1 p.m., you're saying, come to me. Let me be your source. You don't need a song. You need to learn to eat. Oh, you need to learn to eat. And I am your meal. I am your portion. Daily bread. Awaken our appetites, God. Grow us spiritually, Lord.
like this afternoon we're watering seeds of faith out of the seeds of promises um, we're, we're watering them by faith and in Zechariah 4 um, they were facing a, a massive mountain and uh, the prophet Zechariah shows up to Zerubbabel and he says, it's not by power, it's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. And, um, and he says, what are you mighty mountain before Zerubbabel? You will become a level ground. Uh, then he will bring out the capstone to shouts of grace, grace. He talks about Zerubbabel laying the foundation to the temple, but another famous verse that's in here it says who despises the day of small beginnings since the seven eyes of the lord that range throughout the earth will rejoice when they see the chosen capstone in the hand of zerubbabel so the mountain before them is could this capstone be laid and uh, i just feel in my heart that the lord is just watering seeds of faith for the promises that he spoke and that we're not going to despise the day of small beginnings. And it's not by might, it's not by strength, but it's by your spirit, oh Lord. And, uh, and so we want to intercede from this place. Um, Aaron's going to go down with the mic and we just want to open it up to 30 second prayers, just prophesy over mountains, it could be personal things you're going through, cultural things. Um, I know we recently prayed in the uh, Dallas District Courthouse, the circuit court where Roe v. Wade was filed. Um, we actually got to pray in the courtroom where uh, Norma McCorvey uh, filed for what would become Roe versus Wade. And we just felt such a significant shift in the spirit over that issue and that, um, that Lord, that the tides are turning, that the winds are blowing and that things are shifting culturally. Uh, but Lord, I do believe that Roe v. Wade is gonna be overturned and soon. So we just rejoice in that. We rejoice, Lord, in your desire for life. You're the God of life. And we just lift up, Lord, the banner of life and the mandate for life. And that this curse that's been released, this legislation would be reversed in the name of Jesus. So Aaron's going to open up the mic. And if you want to pray for any issue, please come and do it. Yeah, I also want to start by reading this verse. It's Romans 4, verse 17. And in Romans 4, it's talking about Abraham, who was accounted to him for righteousness because he believed what God said. And it says in Romans 4, 17, it says, As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed. Talking about Abraham, he believed God. And then it says this, it just throws in a nugget about who God is. It says, For God, who gives life to the dead, and calls those things which do not exist as though they do. For God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they do. And Jesus, Lord, today we just want to believe. Lord, we want to call into existence, Lord, the things that do not exist, Lord, where there's, where there's not healing over those who need healing, Lord. We just declare that they would be healed. They would be healed in Jesus' name, Lord. I just, I'm feeling... If you have a family member or maybe you're in the room and you need a healing, we just declare the healing of the Lord would hit families, it would hit bodies, it would hit ligaments, bones, joints, organs, minds, Jesus. I even really feel it strong over prodigals, where prodigals are, are away, that the Lord is calling them home, that He's calling them home. He calls things that don't exist as if they do, He's calling them home. And so just stepping into to that place of faith, being like the Lord, believing for big things. And so we believe today, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah.
Yeah, Jesus, we just, I'm just believing it, that your presence that's in the upper room is gonna cover Dallas-Fort Worth. You're gonna saturate a, a region, God, with your presence. Jesus said, hospitals are gonna be cleared. Jesus, by your power. And so Jesus, I just believe, and I know it's possible, even those that are gonna land in DFW Airport, God, that they sense your presence in this city. The power of conviction, God, touching hearts. People crying out for you in the, the streets, in the bars, God. And so Jesus, I know it's possible, and you're gonna do it. You're gonna rend the heavens, and you're gonna come down, God. We're gonna see the greatest awakening that we've ever seen, God. Family members, friends coming into salvation with simple words. Jesus, you're gonna do it. And in this room, we believe it's possible. In Jesus' name. God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Um, I just want to pray over the African-American church, that, um, just sonship, um, just over all those who are fathers. I declare sonship over the African-American church, over the African-American community. Sonship, Lord. Father, I just ask that you spirit of adoption come over the african-american church lord fill them with your love lord fill them with your love no striving no stress your love and the peace that surpasses all understanding to, to guard their hearts and minds in christ jesus lord you are their savior you are their savior let them come under your blood today in jesus name before you now and I pray for those who are in the sex industry in Dallas God for women in the strip clubs and those on Harry Hines God in prostitution Lord I ask you Jesus to loosen the grip of the enemy in their life God I pray for true identity and sonship and true God just authority of your presence over their lives God I ask you Jesus that you would even just um, give them jobs Lord because they're really just trying to provide for their kids so would you just give them jobs Lord and would you just give them a heart to leave that industry and that you would just show them their worth in you and I just proclaim the rest resurrection of your spirit upon their life God the, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead God made that spirit live in them Lord and so I just come against the sex industry I come against the demonic presence over that industry in Jesus name about faith I keep hearing the Lord say I would I could I can but do you believe I want to and I feel like faith our faith 
I just feel him inviting us today to answer the question to him. Do you believe I want to? Because you know I could, you know I would, but you know I can, but would you believe I want to? And I really felt like that's an even scarier step of faith to look him in the eyes and say, I believe you want to do this, Jesus. And so, I don't know, even as we pray for issues, I just want to encourage the room to take the risk of believing. Does he, he, not only is he able, we all know he's able, but does he want to? And so we just want to look at you, God, and say, we believe your heart that you want to. And we know you're able. We know you're a big God. And we believe you want to. We believe you want to. So we pray that you would 